Hello guys, welcome to Abdo channel. In the previous video, we talked about the differences between the procedure oriented programming system and the object oriented programming system. In today's video, we, talked, we will talk about the principles of object oriented paradigm or the programming system. So when you want to create an application in object oriented programming system, we have to follow certain principles. There are uh, certain principles we have to follow. The principles are class and object, encapsulation, inheritance, abstraction, and polymorphism. There are other principles like aggregation, composition. Uh, for now, we will concentrate on these principles. We will try to understand these principles. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the first principle, class and object. In object-oriented programming system, we know that everything revolves around the classes and objects. We can relate the entities uh, we create in our source code uh, with the entities that are present in the real world. That is how, and that is the main principle of the object-oriented programming system, right? So let us understand more details about the object and classes in uh, OOPS uh, object-oriented paradigm. Let us understand the object first. An object is a real-world entity that exists physically, which can be touched or can be seen. So, an entity, an object is an entity that can be uniquely identified by its properties. Let's say, for example, uh, there is a uh, BMW car, there is a, an animal, there is a TV, but uh, you cannot see uh, you cannot see a TV, but you can see 52 inches LG LED TV. Okay, so uh, TV is a generalized version, but if you want to talk about a specific uh, TV, uh, then you have to identify by its properties like 52 inches TV, what is the brand of the TV, what is the uh, monitoring display of the TV, all those things so you have to identify, then you, you can identify that as a 52 inches LG LED TV or the Sony LED TV. That is called as an object. Whenever we are talking about a specific properties of an entity and which we can see and which exists in the real world, that is called as an object. In the same way, car uh, you cannot see, but a 5 series or 7 series BMW car or Maruti Suzuki uh, petrol version car or the diesel version car, uh, you can see them, right? So these are the uh, examples uh, of the uh, of the object so in the same way right as we discussed till now every object has unique identity some set of properties and can perform some actions okay so uh, when we talked about the led tv it, it is having some specific uh, properties right uh, what is the size of it what is the brand of it what is the monitoring display of it uh, okay these are all the specific properties and a uh, tv right uh, we can increase the volume we can decrease the volume, we can change the volume, right? These are all the actions which we can perform or, uh, on an object, okay? So this is about the object. Let us, let us talk about the class now, okay? Class, we call it as a blueprint of an object. It is called as a template of an object. What does it mean, the template or the blueprint? Because class, uh, is a template it tells how the objects will look like what all properties the object will be having what all methods or the what all actions the objects of that class can perform see it is like a template we can define class is a template of an object okay it is also uh, called as a common name uh, for the group of objects that are sharing the similar properties or actions it is a generalized version of an object okay so uh, when we talked about the object right uh, it is a, a specific version of an entity okay uh, we talk about the specific properties of an entity but uh, when when we are creating a class it will be the generalized version so what all objects will be having the similar properties we will create them as a generalized version of the class okay uh, in our earlier example, as we talked about the TV, right? Uh, LG 52 inches Sony LED TV. That is an object, but TV we can mention it as a 
class because TVs there may be several different TVs which will be sharing the different same properties of the different values, right? Say for example, T, uh, for LG LED TV, uh, Sony LED TV, 30 inches LED TV, there will be different sizes on the different monitoring uh, resolutions or the monitoring display types and all, right? So these are uh, these are all called as uh, uh, objects the, where, where we are identifying it as a specific properties and when we are generalizing it the version of an object it is called as a class okay in the same way uh, uh, let us take another example lion okay see here uh, the lion is having uh, legs number of legs and it is having a tail it will have the hair around face and neck and uh, these are all the properties of a lion okay in the same way uh, it can uh, it can perform some actions like it eats it sleeps it roars right so these are all the actions that a lion can perform okay so suppose if you want this is a uh, lion object okay suppose if you want to create a uh, class for it uh, we can create a class animal number of legs has tail these are all the properties of a class okay uh, of a class right so here this do sleep it sleeps right it roars and it eats okay what all these are no, it hunts right so these are all the actions that an that an object that a class can perform that a lion can perform right these are all the methods these are all the actions that a lion can perform and we are um, defining them as methods in the class See, uh, for, you, you can create a number of uh, line objects, but class will be only one. Suppose uh, if, you, if you are having a line with the different properties, you can create its weight, right? Weight may vary, okay? With, you can create one line object with weight is equal to 100 kg. Uh, you can create another line object with weight is equal to 80 kg, okay? So different line objects you will be creating. For each instance for each line you see but the class will be same and it will be having it will it will be the generalized version of all of your objects it will be having the different uh, set of uh, instances okay uh, that is about the lion example let us take another example to understand the class and object in detail see here uh, here we are taking an object to uh, john okay john is a person which we can see him, which we can talk to him in the real world, right? He will be having a name, is gender, number of legs, number of hands, eyes. These are all the specific, uh, specific properties, right, for every human being. Okay, he can eat, he can sleep, he walks, he runs and all, right? So these are all the actions that John can perform, okay? So uh, th these are all the specific properties of John, okay? If you take uh, Ram, right, the, the Ram, uh, another person Ram, then his name will be different, his age will be different. So he can perform uh, another set of actions, right? Uh, he can work, okay? So all those properties are specific to Ram and these properties are specific to John, okay? In the same way, uh, we will create a class for this one, okay, like this. Uh, class, person, name, gender, number of legs, number of hands, so they can sleep, walk, eat. These are all the methods and these are the properties we define a class for person. So any number of objects uh, which are sharing these many common properties, you can create those many uh, objects and you can utilize them under the person class. Okay. Let us take another example. Uh, let us take a transaction. In any banking transaction, uh, we see a we do some uh, withdrawal and deposit transactions right so every transaction we perform as some properties okay like uh, transaction date and time transaction type whether it is a withdrawal or a deposit uh, what is the transaction amount who is performing the transaction see all these pro what is the transaction source is it a, is it done at the poc pos point of sales or the internet banking or from the atm or from the mobile banking what is the point of source okay transaction source okay uh, these are the different uh, properties that uh, that a transaction can have okay uh, the methods right the transaction actions will be make transaction okay you can do the deposit you can do the withdrawal and all right 
so these are the properties and methods of any transaction can be associated with them so if you have different transactions like some five different withdrawal transactions five different deposit transactions you can generalize them under a class named transaction okay so transaction amount will be there date will be there transaction type it will be having the withdrawal for a withdrawal transaction you will be creating an object with the transaction type as withdrawal for deposit transaction object you will be creating a trans uh, transaction object with the transaction type of uh, deposit okay like that you can create see these are the uh, different examples and of classes and objects uh, where the objects which we can identify with the specific properties and the class is a generalized on uh, a generalized version of a object so if you refer in all these classes right uh, like in lion uh, lion uh, we can see the lion and we can identify it as a lion by its properties right in similarly person john can be identified as john by looking at his properties uh, and similarly transaction can be identified as transaction by uh, by looking at its properties whether it is a withdrawal property or the withdrawal transaction or the deposit transaction so whenever uh, we are trying to identify a, an object as an object right by its properties those properties are called the state of an object okay uh, what is the state of an object means so what are the different uh, Uh, values that are associated to the properties of that particular object those are called as a state of an object okay in the same way lion and, and john can perform uh, some actions right they can eat they can walk they sleep they roar etc right and these actions are called as methods okay so make transaction is a method whatever the actions that objects can perform those met those are the those actions are called as uh, methods of a class okay that's all about the objects and classes in today's video in the next video we will talk about uh, data encapsulation principle which is the second object oriented programming system principle after that uh, we will write a, a sample class to understand how we can create a class and object and how the encapsulation uh, is implemented in terms of classes and objects in uh, uh, java and the ops systems that's all for now thanks for watching if you find this topic is helpful please give it a like subscribe please subscribe to my channel thank you